Will Bitcoin become insecure after the block subsidy ends? This consistently gets brought up mainly by the .eths who don't own much Bitcoin, if any Bitcoin at all. From my perspective, the block subsidy does not secure Bitcoin. If anything, the block subsidy could potentially subsidize censorship. In my opinion, once the subsidy is gone, Bitcoin becomes more secure and more censorship resistant. Back in 2022, I co-authored a report titled Bitcoin Transaction Fees with Pierre Richard, VP of Research at Riot Platforms, on the topic of the long-term economics of Bitcoin settlement finality. This basically just means, will there be issues transacting Bitcoin in the future, and what can miners actually do to attempt to attack users? A lot of people seem to think that if a miner or a group of miners obtains 51% of the total network hash rate, then the very next block would be the end of the world. But that's certainly not the case. Miners can only build the heaviest valid chain. The key word here is valid. What determines if a chain is valid? Well, node operators do, which is everyone that is simply running Bitcoin Core on their laptop. No matter how much hash rate a miner has, they cannot create more than 21 million Bitcoin, increase the block size, or change any other key consensus rules. As a full node operator, which is anyone running the Bitcoin software and not necessarily mining, you set the rules of Bitcoin. Miners build blocks that are valid according to your rules. If they build a block that's invalid according to your rules, then your node will reject their block. So at the end of the day, all miners can do is build chains that censor transactions. This could mean censoring future transactions or going back a few blocks, rewriting the chain quickly with their vast hash power and attempting to double spend some of their own coins one time, which is the same as censoring their originally broadcasted transaction and replacing it with another transaction, sending themselves the coins that they just spent. Miners are actually pretty powerless when it comes to changing Bitcoin's rules in a non-backwards compatible way. A good example of centralized mining that Pierre has mentioned before is the idea of all Bitcoin mining taking place on just one laptop, which was actually the case when Satoshi first started Bitcoin. Obviously, Bitcoin didn't die right away, despite one entity having 100% of the total network hash rate. In fact, Bitcoin works just fine with only one centralized miner honestly mining on one laptop. So even if mining is completely centralized, there isn't a problem as long as that miner is acting honestly. But what happens if the centralized miner or miners act dishonestly? What if they start censoring transactions? Well, Bitcoin is an open global permissionless network. If someone's transaction is being censored, they can increase their transaction fee and encourage honest miners to join the network overwhelm the attacking miner, include this transaction in the heaviest chain, and then the attacker no longer is building the heaviest chain. There are market incentives in place to ensure you can use Bitcoin. It's the Bitcoin fee market, the mempool. From my perspective, Bitcoin mining is fairly decentralized today. In fact, it's clearly much more decentralized than mining was over a decade ago. From my perspective, 51% attacks are highly unlikely. But Bitcoin would survive them in the long run anyway, which makes them less likely to occur in the first place. Why try to 51% attack the network if you know it will fail? This is an open permissionless network, not a permanent walled garden that nobody can join. The beauty of Bitcoin is everyone acts in their own self-interest, and we get this perfectly scarce monetary network protected by cryptography. If people do become concerned with settlement finality and attacks from miners, all users have to do is wait for more confirmations. For example, Bitcoin Cash still trades on Coinbase, Kraken, and Binance, and they deem transactions final only after 15 confirmations. And Bitcoin Cash's total block reward is almost always less than Bitcoin's transaction fees per block today. You can reverse a credit card or ACH transaction after a month, and you can certainly do it without consuming gigawatts worth of energy. Bitcoin is simply better than what we have today, and it works above governments. Last, people think the subsidy is what prevents attacks today, but they fail to realize that attackers would literally receive the subsidy. So the subsidy, in my opinion, doesn't protect Bitcoin from miners attacking it. All it does is prevent seniorage and initially distribute the 21 million coins. 
Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time.